broadcasting live on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. It's time for baseball at Fox Field. It's the Lynchburg Hornets coming in at 26-4, and four, the seventh-ranked team in the country, getting set to host for first place in the ODAC Conference. It's a rematch game. These two teams met on April 5th in Ashland. Randolph-Macon took game one. You're getting a look at our pregame meeting with the umpires there. You're getting two of the best coaches in the Division Three level. It's Lucas Jones and Ray Hedrick, Coach Jones for Lynchburg, three Coach of the Year awards in his six seasons, and Ray Hedrick, three Coach of the Year awards. He's been at Randolph-Macon for almost two decades now. It's two of the top programs. Randolph-Macon ranked ninth in the country. Lynchburg ranked seventh in the country. And, oh, yeah, the Hornets undefeated at home. Fox has been an absolute fortress this season. Lynchburg comes in at 15-0. So there's a lot on the line here this sunny Wednesday in April. We're getting close to tournament baseball, and it's going to be so much fun here at Fox Field. Stick around. We've got the Hornets and the Yellow Jackets. First pitch is next on LHSN. Think a private education is too expensive? Think again. At the University of Lynchburg, you can get a personalized education for the cost of a state school. If you're commuting and you get our top scholarships, you could pay much less. And you get all that without the hassle of giant lecture halls. Our faculty know your name here and do more than just teach. You might even do research together and plan out your next career move. Want to have some outdoor adventures while getting a degree at the same time? At the University of Lynchburg, we have an on-campus zip line in Rosewood. Plus, we offer adventure trips that cost less than a cup of coffee. And did I mention our beautiful scenery? We're a university for students looking for something more than just books. Welcome to your new adventure experience. Your choices matter, even your choice of a college. The University of Lynchburg is the first college in Virginia to go carbon neutral. Our dining hall is green restaurant certified. We compost all of our food waste and purchase our electricity from landfill gas. Now we're turning a hazardous lake into a thriving urban wetland. When you choose Lynchburg, you leave a smaller footprint while building a better tomorrow. Lynchburg is all about you, your ideas, and your goals. We've got one professor for every 10 students, so you can get all the support you need. In the classroom, in the lab, or in nature. You'll learn by putting yourself out there, and we're right there with you. Every great college has a great city. For Lynchburg, we are near urban areas with lots of restaurants, shopping, and events. Plus, we are one of the top schools in the area. Come see for yourself. This is the dough. 
It's wicked cute. It's always so pretty. University of Lynchburg, we've lowered our tuition, so you get a better value for a great education. Come see our campus for yourself. Get small classes, nationally recognized mentoring and advising, and a community that has your back every step of the way at the University of Lynchburg. My name is Alexis Fabula. I major in criminology and I double minor in psychology and criminal forensics. My favorite part about Lynchburg is the friends that I've um, come to have. It's helped me come out of my shell more and it's helped me become the person I am and the student I am. I really enjoyed how small the campus was and I also really enjoy um, how small the class sizes are. It made me feel like I was going to be more engaged than I would at a bigger campus. If someone was on the fence of coming to the University of Lynchburg, I would definitely love to sit down and have a conversation with them because I'm forever grateful that I made this choice. Um, it's definitely something that a student wouldn't regret. I, out of my four years here, I've not had one bad experience. I've had a great four years and I'm going to be very sad to go. This video isn't about me. It's about the limitless possibilities that the University of Lynchburg allows me to be. An athlete, an artist, an adventurer, a writer, a believer, a human. Because what I love about the University of Lynchburg is that they have a saying, here we're home. And honestly though, I think a better fit would be a home for everyone because it doesn't matter the color of your skin, the person you love, the God you pray to, the pronouns you use, the city you're from, the language you speak. University of Lynchburg gives you the greatest opportunity they can for you to be the absolute best version of yourself. We are set and ready for a key ODAC matchup here between Randolph Macon Yellow Jackets and the University of Lynchburg Hornets. Kyle Haney hanging out with you on a Wednesday afternoon. So glad to have you along for the ride. It's Lynchburg undefeated at home, 26 and four overall. Hornets currently at the top of the charts in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference, 14 and two in the league. Randolph Macon 13 and three. They're right there behind tied with Shenandoah. Randolph Macon split with Shenandoah this weekend. Yellow Jackets won game two. So it's just a one game winning streak right now for Randolph Macon, but they've won nine out of their last 10. 
Lynchburg has won six in a row and 13 of their last 14. So it's two ball clubs that are playing really well right now. It's two teams that are battling for a regular season ODAC title and then also the top seed in the tournament. And it's two teams that would have at-large bid options if they do not win the ODAC tournament here in a couple weeks. So it's a resume-building type of game. On top of all of that, you're looking for a win over another ranked opponent. And both of these teams are ranked in the top ten in Division Three baseball fans. It's Lynchburg number seven right now, Randolph-Macon number nine. They have met once a couple weeks ago. Yellow Jackets won that game in Ashland 6-2. to two. And you'll get the same starting pitchers in this one as you had a couple weeks ago. It'll be number 32, Brandon Pond on the mound for Lynchburg. He's pitched once since that game against Randolph-Macon. He'll square off against Cam Furman for Randolph-Macon. And both ball clubs have some key options out of the bullpen, which we will be discussing as the afternoon goes on. Around the diamond for Lynchburg, the battery mate first off for Brandon Pond will be the grad student Holden Fiedler. At first base, it's Eric Hyatt. Ben Jones plays second and bats second. Brandon Garcia, his high school teammate, playing short. Gavin Collins is at third in the outfield. It'll be Avery Neves in left, Carson Atkins in center, and Jackson Harding on a real tear. Swinging the bat is in right field today for Lynchburg. Leadoff man for Randolph Macon will be Matt Myers. Speaking of a tear, he's got a 10 game hitting streak that he'll put on the line today. Left-handed swinger takes strike one to get the ball game started. Decent crowd here at Fox Field today, especially for a midweek game. We've got great weather. It's mid 80s, low humidity, and a little less wind today than yesterday. So it should be a fantastic day to play baseball. Ground out to the second baseman by Matt Myers is the First retired batter, and here comes Ethan Iannuzzi, the left fielder for Randolph-Macon. It's Myers, Iannuzzi, and then Carter Schmidt hits third. Cole Hunter, the right fielder, will hit in the cleanup spot. Miles Webb, the first baseman, batting fifth. Aaron Lottenschlager, the second baseman, hits sixth. Catcher Logan Smith in the seven hole. Carter Johnson, the third baseman, batting eighth. And Grayson Bush is the shortstop, wearing number nine, hitting ninth for Randolph-Macon. Good start so far for Brandon Pond. He's recorded one out. He's 0-1 now. And Ethan Iannuzzi, a dangerous hitter for Randolph-Macon. It's a ball club that has a bunch of them. They hit 336 as a team, on base at 424 as a team, and they slug right around 500. Randolph-Macon averages about nine runs per game. It's been higher than that in the last five. They're just about 11 and a half runs per game in their last five contests. Lynchburg's got pretty good numbers in that category as well. The recent games, not that the beginning of the season was bad for Lynchburg, but it, it seems like the Hornets and, and both these ball clubs today are really rounding into form, putting together some good performances, seem to be peaking at the right time. We're still a couple weeks away from tournament time, but definitely mid to late April is when all baseball coaches will tell you that it really – Starts getting down to that nitty-gritty. Iannuzzi swings on this one. Neves is going back to the fence. I don't think it's going to stay in. It's not. Home run for Ethan. Iannuzzi, solo shot off Brandon Pond will be the first run of the ball game. Pond fell behind a little bit there, and he left one in the wheelhouse for Ethan Iannuzzi. He is a guy that can do plenty of damage. That is home run number 19 in his career. Ethan Iannuzzi belts that one for the first home run of the game, the first run of the game. It was a home run the first time these two ball clubs met, not from Iannuzzi, but there were a couple or one apiece from each team a few weeks ago when Lynchburg lost to Randolph-Macon 6-2. Check swing that Pond can't get to. Ben Jones coming on, throws on the move, and records the second out of the inning. Good job from Brandon Pond there to come back. Didn't let this solo dinger rattle him too much. It wouldn't appear. Brandon Pond, if you don't know his story, fans, he was the ODAC Pitcher of the Year in 2021. Missed most of last season due to an arm injury, labrum injury. And he did, he did pitch a little bit in the first three weeks of the season last year, but 
pretty much missed 80, 90% of the season. He is back. He's throwing more. He hasn't quite ramped up. Don't know if he's ready for the complete game stuff just yet, Brandon Pond, but this could be a different story here in this one. You never know. He's falling behind 3-0 to the cleanup hitter, right fielder Cole Hunter. Pond will get that strike across. Brandon Pond is a hard-throwing, tall, lanky right-hander. He has got a deadly slider. He's got one of those wipeout sliders, as we'll put that on hold. Eric Hyatt will field on the high hop and step on the bag himself. First inning is done. One run, one hit, a long ball, none left on for Randolph Macon. They lead 1-0 as we head to the bottom of the first at Fox Field. Hello, my name is Dr. Sabita Manian. I'm the Associate Dean of the Lynchburg College of Arts and Sciences, in charge of the School of Social Sciences. Did you know that April 7th is Give Day at the University of Lynchburg? On this Give Day, I am committing myself to the Model UN Simulations, also known as the Model United Nations Simulations. And that is because, one, I love the idea that it integrates your learning, the students' learning, by bringing together textbook with practice. And second, it really embodies the Lynchburg learning experience. So join me on this gift day because no gift is too small. Contribute in any way to someone you wish to honor or something that you wish to honor at this Lynchburg campus. Thank you and spread the word. Randolph Macon leading 1-0 after an, a half of inning of play. And it was Hunter Cole that grounded out to end the half for Randolph Macon. I, I switched, I transposed the first and the last name there. So apologies, Hunter Cole fans. We'll say hello to any Randolph Macon fans that are watching us here today. We got a great day to play at Fox Field. And the Yellow Jackets take the early lead. It's Brandon Garcia in the shortstop leading off for Lynchburg. Garcia will take ball one up and away from Cam Furman. The starter for Randolph Macon. He's been the midweek guy getting the ball in these midweek ODAC games. He's been pretty effective all season long. Cam Furman in his career, he is 11 and three in 25 starts. A Couple weeks ago, April 5th against Lynchburg, he went four and a third innings. Gave up eight hits, but only two earned runs. And he really kept that Lynchburg offense in pretty good check. Struck out two, walked one in that one. He's another guy who does not walk many hitters. 75 Ks to just 32 walks in the career for number 40, Cam Furman, senior from Midlothian. Gets a strike with a tailing fastball there. 3-1 count for the freshman, Brandon Garcia. He's been outstanding all season long. Brandon Garcia enters the game at 355, second on the team and on base percentage at 490. And really a fun player to watch offensively and defensively with bat and glove. Brandon Garcia is a difference maker and you can see why he is in the lineup hitting leadoff as just a freshman. He'll foul that one away, full count offering from Cam Furman and we'll try it again here. If you joined us late, solo homer from Ethan Iannuzzi is the story so far. Parked it over the left field fence. Brandon Pond, the starter for Lynchburg, just put a ball in a place that you can't really miss with a, a hitter like Iannuzzi. He hits mistakes like that and he hits them hard. 19th home run of his career. Another foul ball from Brandon Garcia. Staying alive here, nice long at bat to begin the offensive proceedings for Lynchburg. It'll be Garcia, Jones, Neves, Hyatt, O'Donovan, Collins, Harding, Fiedler, and Atkins. And Brandon Garcia is aboard with a 
Sharp single over the second baseman's head. Brandon Garcia now with a 14 game hitting streak. Didn't take long to continue that one. 14 in a row for Brandon Garcia. There is seven multi-hit games in that stretch as well. So not only is he doing it with consistency, he's got some quantity in there too. Not just slapping a single here or there, seven multi-hit games in the last 14 for Brandon Garcia. And he'll be in line to try to get another one of those the next time he steps up. But right now, it's the high school teammate, Ben Jones. Batman and Robin is what Coach Lucas Jones call Ben and Brandon, the two high school teammates. And they're both in the starting lineup as freshmen here at the University of Lynchburg. Good little double play combo up the middle too. A one count on Jones. Now it's even at 1-1 one, one as another fastball misses up and away. You get another great look there at the hard shot from Brandon Garcia. And you can tell how hard he hit it because the right fielder really fielded it where he started. Usually those outfielders are going to come on and gather those singles a little bit closer to the infield. But that one just kind of held the right fielder, Hunter Cole, in his tracks. Got to him that quickly. One, two count on Ben Jones. Watches what looked to be a changeup fade away and out of the zone. Good plate discipline there. Lynchburg, really good in that regard. They have walked 158 times as a ball club this season. And that number is around the top in the ODAC. Two, two count. Average lead for Garcia at first, but Cam Furman will toss over there and take a look at him. Great camera work today. We got the full crew going on. We got replays going on. It's going to be a fun broadcast. We think the game will live up to the hype as well. Two ranked teams, two teams ranked in the top ten. Ben Jones will get a lot of this, but not enough of it to bother Ethan Iannuzzi out there in left. It's F7 for out number one of the inning and the game, and it brings up the All-American Avery Neves. Left fielder for Lynchburg is the career record holder here at the University of Lynchburg in just basically two and a half seasons. All-time leader at Lynchburg in walks, home runs, runs scored. Second in quite a few categories, including a couple big ones, I think. Second in runs batted in, and he's second in doubles as well. He's got 169 RBI in his career. Leader is Steven Scott at 188. So we'll keep an eye on that mark as the year goes on. See if Avery, ne Avery Neves can get another record at Lynchburg. He's the all-time conference leader in walks as well. Broke that record earlier this season. And he may have a few more of those conference records by the time he's done. He absolutely batters a ball over the shortstop's head. I mean, that ball was smoked. Avery Neves got good metal on that and drove it over the outstretched arm of Grayson Bush. Gosh, if Bush had even gotten the leather to that, I'm not sure it would have stayed in as hard as that ball was hit. Second single of the inning for Lynchburg, and they may, in, may be in business here with one gone in the bottom of the first. Eric Hyatt, the first baseman, stepping to the plate. Eric Hyatt is a guy in this lineup that really hasn't hit full time this season. This will be start number seven for Eric Hyatt, but he's swinging a great bat, 355 on the year. And I think he's got a lot of faith and support from the teammates, the coaching staff. He's in the middle of this very, very potent Hornet offense right now, hitting cleanup. So that says a lot about the confidence level that Coach Lucas Jones has in Eric Hyatt. Lynchburg's lineup has been in a constant state of motion. In fact, they've used different lineups every game this season. 2-0 count for the hot hitting first baseman from Lynchburg. It's a 1-0 yellow jacket lead. Cam Furman has given up a couple singles. Ben Jones has made the only out in the inning so far for Lynchburg. Hyatt swings on this. Hits it the opposite way. Oh, and that popped out of the glove. That ball is down. That ball is down. Garcia is going to get the stop sign at third base. He had to kind of hang out to see if the right fielder 
was going to make the play or not. That was Hunter Cole that came on to try to make a slide and grab, and he did get his glove to it, but it popped out as we'll wait for the official ruling here on the hit or error. We'll take some time to discuss that and think about that, but we'll tell you what the situation is now. It's bases loaded for a guy that can really drive in runs, Riley O'Donovan. Riley O'Donovan, 21 RBI this season, only hitting 269, but very dangerous, particularly with runners on base. He's a guy that thrives with runners on base. He loves to get up there with men in scoring position. And right now, he's got an 0-1 count after a breaking ball got twisted in there for a strike from Cam Furman. Furman under some pressure here in the bottom of the first. O'Donovan swings, gets it through the hole. One is in. Neves will turn and then stop at third base, and we are tied. 22nd RBI of the season for Riley O'Donovan. It's at least the third single of the inning, depending on how we score that ball in the outfield there that Eric Hyatt hit. And the bases are loaded again. Gavin Collins, junior third baseman for Lynchburg. He'll step in there with ducks on the pond. Looking to do more damage. Great situation as a hitter. Base is loaded. You've already scored one. You know you got the pitcher on the ropes just a little bit. Breaking ball for a strike. Like that from Cam Furman. Not afraid to go to any pitch and any count. That's been the scouting report on him all season. Very, very capable. And always, always in the zone, it seems like. Collins swings on this. Neves will tag. This ball... Almost going to drop in in the gap, but the center fielder does make the play. Neves will scamper home, and it's a sacrifice fly to give Lynchburg the lead. 2-1 as Gavin Collins does the job, knows the assignment, gets the ball airborne to get Avery Neves in. The threat is not over with the hot-hitting Jackson Harding up. Seven-game hitting streak. He's had four straight multi-hit games. He had an outstanding week last week. Let's see if Jackson Harding can continue his hot hitting. Fast ball in the other batter's box for ball one. Two gone. Lynchburg has scored two. And it's runners on first and second. RBI single from Riley O'Donovan and then a sacrifice fly RBI from Gavin Collins. Harding gets a piece of that, flares it back into the netting. 1-1. Wind, not really a factor at the moment, and that's rare to say down here at Fox Field, baseball fans, because normally it's always windy and we're always talking about it, but day like today, that might be the last time we mention it. 1-1 one, one to Harding. Good spot right there. That just missed. Logan Smith is the catcher for Randolph-Macon. He'll confirm with the umpire where that one was. It was good presentation from Smith there to try to freeze that ball and hold it in the zone. 2-1 now for Jackson Harding. Left-handed hitter from Keysville. The key man has hit one up the middle for a base hit. Hornets coming in to score. Lynchburg leads 3-1 RBI single from Jackson Harding. It was Eric Hyatt that came around to plate the third run of the inning for Lynchburg. How about a response right there for the Hornets? You go down 1-0 on the solo home run, and then you come back in your half of the first inning and answer with three. Very impressive, and it's got to make you feel good if you're Brandon Pond, the starting pitcher for Lynchburg. He's actually getting a few extra tosses in the bullpen as we speak. It's turned into sort of a long inning, so maybe it does make sense that Brandon Pond would want to go over there and try to wake that wing up just a little bit. 3-1. Inning isn't over yet. He got two more hitters. That can do some serious damage. Holden Fiedler will take that one for ball one. This Lynchburg lineup, top to bottom, is formidable. And there are very few weak spots, if any. Holden Fiedler's hitting 314 on the season. That's from your eight-hole hitter. And the nine-hole man, Carson Atkins, you can make a case he's been the best hitter on the team this season. Looks like the same pitch, just a better location from Cam Furman. 1-1 one, one count. Fifth hit of the inning. 
for Lynchburg there off the bat of Jackson Harding. Five singles. There's a lot to be said for extra base power, but when you can just pepper a team with singles over and over, well, that gets the job done too. Another breaking ball to Holden Fiedler that he takes for a ball. I think it's been three straight, really. That kind of front door, inside, off-speed pitch from Cam Furman. That was a fastball that he, that he came after Fiedler with, and he fouls it away. 2-2 two -two count, two outs, still in the first inning. If this first inning is any indication of what the rest of the game holds, Buckle up, fans. You're going to be in for a great one. Maybe one of the all-time games here at Fox Field if this keeps up. Fiedler will just barely stay alive. Good piece of two-strike hitting there. You could tell he was out front and possibly a little bit fooled by the breaking ball from Cam Furman. But he managed to get enough of it on there, keep the at-bat going. Riley O'Donovan leads off at second. It's Jackson Harding at first. Infield is regular depth. There's a swing and a miss on a breaking ball. And Fiedler is down on strikes, but a very successful first inning for Lynchburg. They score three, five hits, no making errors, and it's two left on for the Hornets as they snatch the lead here at Fox Field. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. Brandon Pond back to the mound for the second inning for the Lynchburg Hornets. Gave up a solo homer in the top of the first, but the offense really responding for Lynchburg. They scratch out five singles, a sack fly in there as well. Lynchburg scores three. They take a two-run lead. And Brandon Pond back and ready to work here in the top of the second. Gets strike one. Brandon Pond from Chesterfield, Virginia. He just went two and two-thirds against Randolph-Macon two weeks ago. Gave up three hits, just one earned run in there. But I mentioned Brandon Pond coming off of injury. We'll see how long he goes today. I believe he has pitched five innings in a start this season. So it's not like he's completely handcuffed by the coaching staff. But there is a pitch count there, an innings limit kind of a deal that we don't really know about. Sweeper breaking ball for a strike. We'll get the first out of the inning. Miles Webb gone swinging. K number one for a guy who really struck out a lot of hitters in his career. 19 and seven in 39 appearances in his career. In 2021, that ODAC Pitcher of the Year award winning season, it was 90 Ks. That's the fifth most in a season in school history. Velocity with the fastball, velocity with the breaking ball, too. He throws sort of a power slider, Brandon Pond, that really uh, doesn't lose much off the fastball. Maybe we should be calling it a cutter for that reason, as Brandon Pond has now debatted Aaron Lottenschlager. He lost the handle on that foul tip. I think Lottenschlager is going to go get some pine tar, some grip, or something on the bat. And we're going to get another great look at it. Yeah, he actually fouled that off. Usually you lose the bat 
when you swing and miss, you're just so far out front, your body's trying to break itself and you end up losing the grip. That time, it actually came out as he made contact off the end of the bat. 1-1 one, one count. Brandon Pond pitching from the windup. Good spot on that one right there. Missed upstairs slightly. And now it's a 2-1 count on the second baseman, Aaron Lottenschlager. Line drive back at Pond. He has to fend it off. I think it hit the glove. He is clearly in pain. I think he'll be able to stay in the game just at first glance. But you could tell that that stung a little bit. And I think we'll take a we'll take a second look. Maybe we're going to get a visual here of Brandon Pond just kind of walking around. It's interesting, down at Avert on Saturday, Zach Potts got hit in the leg. There's a line drive. And you could see Pond just able to knock it down. And as he flipped it over, you could see the grimace on his face there. He's getting checked out by head coach Lucas Jones and our wonderful athletic training staff here at the University of Lynchburg. So important to all of our teams. And uh, you, you, you'd like it when your athletic trainers are not very busy, but that's the nature of sports. Sometimes they got to get out there and check on athletes. And this situation is one of them here. So we get a short little break with two outs. It will be Logan Smith, the catcher, hitting seventh due up as Brandon Pond. I was in the midst, uh, middle of talking about Zach Potts, who broke the all-time wins record for Lynchburg as a pitcher on Saturday. But he actually got hit in the, in the leg right above the ankle late in the game. And he did not get any, any leather on that one as he wasn't able to make the play. Ball kind of caromed off his leg, but he stayed in the game. You could tell Zach Potts was in pain, but he stayed in the game after that, had the ice on it in the second game, and he said, ah, oh, no, it's fine. It's it's all good. It'll just be a bruise there, and then I'll be ready to go in a few days. So somewhat of a similar situation here for Brandon Pond. We're getting a great shot at the crowd. A lot of our Students and faculty and staff enjoying the sunshine out here at Fox Field. Just an incredible day to take in a ball game. And so here we go. After a short delay, Brandon Pond is back, and he's dealing strike one here to Logan Smith. Got a good shout from the dugout when that pitch came in there. Smith will swing on that one and pull it foul. Logan Smith. This is start number nine. He is hitting 438 on the season. One homer in there, five doubles for Logan Smith. There was that power slider from Brandon Pond, but missed away for ball number one. One, two, the count with two outs. Lynchburg leading three to one. Pond kicks and fires, got him. Strike three there. Oh, and Brandon Pond is fired up. Why wouldn't he be? Lynchburg leads 3-1, looking for more in their half of the second inning. Coming up next on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Great moments are born from great opportunity. That's what you have here tonight. That's what you've earned here tonight. This is your time. Now go out there and take it.
Every great college has a great city. For Lynchburg, we are near urban areas with lots of restaurants, shopping, and events. Plus, we are one of the top schools in the area. Come see for yourself. Bottom of the second inning here from James C. Fox Field, the campus of the University of Lynchburg. It's a new pitcher for Randolph-Macon. Sam Slevin is on. This will be appearance number 14. That is the most on the team for Randolph-Macon. So a couple thoughts here just from my perspective, baseball fans. I think Sam Slevin, we knew we were going to see him at some point in this game. He's been a key man on the bullpen all season, but I don't think Randolph-Macon wanted to go to him here in the second inning. That's just a hunch. The starter was Cam Furman, 33 pitches in that first inning where he surrendered five singles and three Lynchburg runs. So maybe that means you got to get Slevin up a little bit earlier and go to him. Just 1-0 on the season, but don't read too much into that. Check out the ERA, 2.08 for Sam Slevin. He has struck out 15 and walked just four. And this is appearance number 14. Uh, Randolph Macon is a lot of great bullpen options they can go to. Cole Stam has seven saves on the season. He is tied with Lynchburg's Jack Batchmore for the conference lead in that category. And while we're talking about bullpen options, you got to feel like it's a pretty good possibility that we will see Jack Batchmore at some point for Lynchburg in this game. Swing and a miss from Carson Atkins. Full count now with nobody out. The center fielder for Lynchburg has put together a fantastic season, 343. He's driven in 27, nine doubles, five homers for Carson Atkins. He'll foul that one back in our direction, and we'll try the full count pitch again here in just a moment. Lynchburg leads 3-1. It was a clean inning from Brandon Pond in the top of the second, struck out two. Had to fend off a ball that hit him, looked like in the heel of the glove. Mm. Strikeout looking there. Good pitch from Sam Slevin to get Carson Atkins down on strikes. And a leadoff man is back up, Brandon Garcia. It's a 14-game hitting streak for number seven the freshman from Lynchburg. And in that stretch, he's had seven multi-hit games, swinging a very hot bat. And a reminder, he is just a freshman. So much fun to watch play in the field. As he does it all for Lynchburg. Think about that, a, a starting as a freshman and you're playing a position like shortstop, high stress, high intensity kind of a spot. You're always gonna be under a microscope over there. You're gonna have to field a lot of balls, make a lot of plays, and you're kind of the quarterback of the defense out there. You could argue catcher falls under that role as well, but uh, obviously shortstop, key position for any ball club. You got a freshman there. That's the kind of player that Brandon Garcia is though. He can handle it. One, two count on the new arm, Sam Slevin. He'll foul off that breaking ball. And there is a lot to be said for going to a new pitcher each time through the lineup. That could have been part of the game plan for Randolph Macon as well. Don't let any of these Lynchburg hitters see an arm more than once. That's a, a, a trend and a theory that has really become commonplace in baseball nowadays. Have to have the guys in the bullpen that can execute it. Wow, what a play down the line there. On the move from Carter Johnson. I thought it was going to be a routine foul ball. I was continuing the thought about the pitching plan, and Carter Johnson just absolutely on his horse down the line to catch this. We get a great replay of it. And a backhand play at that. Just as he was getting to the track, then he had to avoid his own left fielder. <laughs> Almost had friendly fire from Ianuzzi coming in there. Hats off to Carter Johnson. That's a good play. Tough luck for Brandon Garcia, but that is the second out of the inning. 
My goodness. Those are the kind of plays that you can think back on and really just marvel at that he made it. But think about how that changes the complexion of a game, possibly. If you get Brandon Garcia on for Lynchburg, all of a sudden, get your leadoff man out there with one out, great hitters behind him, you got a chance to score again. With an 0-2 count on Ben Jones, Hornets may be putting the offensive output on hold right here. Jones will swing on that, pump it into the right center gap. It is down for a hit. So Ben Jones has got his first hit of the ball game. It is single number six for Lynchburg. And this brings up the All-American Avery Neves. So remember that play, though. Regardless of what happens here, the rest of this second inning, Lynchburg scoring or otherwise, remember that fantastic piece of glove work from Carter Johnson. He's actually due up as the leadoff man for Randolph-Macon in the top of the third. Oh, Slevin hit Avery Neves. That one just got away from him, I think. Although you get a shake and a nod of the head from Slevin as he walks to the plate to get the baseball back. Umpire will exchange rocks with him, and we'll get a shot at this one catching Avery Neves right in the small of the back there. It looked like right under the number. Hit by pitch number 61 on the season for Lynchburg. They average two per game in that category. Slightly under what they did last year at 2.29 hit batters per contest. Runner in scoring position now. And two on for Eric Hyatt. He's one for one so far in the game. First at bat against Sam Slevin. Two gone in the bottom of the second. Breaking ball start. Misses low. Eric Hyatt hitting 355 on the season so far. That was coming into the game, so it's going up at the moment, one for one. Uh, really doesn't have the at-bats needed to qualify in any of the statistical categories, but last month or so, Eric Hyatt has been a regular in this lineup that, that is always changing, always shifting, but Eric Hyatt seems like he plays every other game now as Lynchburg does that a lot. You have some stalwarts, some guys that are in there every time, like Avery Neves. Brandon Garcia falls in that category. So does Carson Atkins. Hyatt will foul that one away. In the regular rotation for Coach Lucas Jones, who enjoys talking about that lineup and his thoughts on the lineup construction and who to run out there on a given day. It's a lot of fun talking baseball with Coach Jones. And uh, he values all the different perspectives as well. Here's a toss to second base. That will keep Ben Jones close. He leads off at second. Avery Neves at first after a hit by pitch. Six hits so far in the game for Lynchburg, one in the inning. They lead three to one. Slevin, long hold and a look at Jones. That one was a twister that just missed the front shoulder and elbow of Eric Hyatt. Three one count for the Lynchburg first baseman. Eric Hyatt getting the encouragement and the shouts from the dugout. Everybody on that front railing for Lynchburg. 3-1 pitch. Hyatt swung on it and missed it. Foul ball back here that hit the screen as it was coming down. Good effort from the catcher, Logan Smith, but unable to pull that one in. And now it'll be a full count situation with two outs in the bottom of the second. Runners get the head start here. It's a, a good place for a pitcher to maybe pick the second with the, with the wheel move, inside move, or you can just use your regular picks as well. First baseman is behind Avery Neves at first. Second baseman holding Ben Jones close. There's the payoff. Hyatt swings on it. Iannuzzi back slightly into his glove side to pull in the third out of the inning. So Lynchburg gets one hit, they leave one on. It's no yellow jacket errors and we move to the third inning here at Fox Field in Lynchburg. To them, the whole world looks like an opportunity, one to be seized, built upon, and made better. 
for their sport and the people around it. To student athletes, every opportunity is a chance to change what could be and show the world what opportunity can do. There's Avery Neves patrolling left field for Lynchburg. Got hit by a pitch there. Hit him in the square of the back, and Sam Slevin with a little reaction. Don't know if it was just a, yeah, that was my bad. I missed with that one, or if maybe something with the tensions and the all those things that come with a key ODAC matchup between these two ball clubs. Who knows? You be the judge, fans. It's uh, a, a really a series that has been remarkably close in the last few years. These ball clubs split last season. Uh, Lynchburg in the last four seasons leads the series four games to three, but that tells you how close it is. And five of our last ball games in the last four years decided by four runs or less, including the first time these two ball clubs met this season. Eric Hyatt, good play to move to the second base side and toss to Brandon Pond covering for out number one. That was Carter Johnson grounding out there. He made that fantastic play in foul territory for an out. Well, let me repeat that one because it's so fascinating. Five of our last seven ball games between these two clubs decided by four runs or less. So basically one swing of the bat or less. That's kind of a standard that people talk about, a four run game. That, Im that implies that it was close and it was a six to two win for Randolph Macon a couple weeks ago in Ashland. And so far, this one feels like it's going to be close too. Brandon Pond, 1-0 start to the nine-hole hitter, Grayson Bush, the shortstop for Randolph Macon. Evens the count at 1-1. Grayson Bush has started every game this year for Randolph Macon, hitting 267 on the season. Swing and miss there. He's got himself in a one-two hole. Bush is one of, it looks like, five Yellow Jackets that has started every game. He'll flare this one into center field for a base hit. And the nine-hole hitter for Randolph Macon is aboard with one out in the top of the third. Here comes the leadoff man, Matt Myers. Myers is swinging that hot bat. Ten consecutive games with a hit. He's had seven multi-hit games in his last 14. And he has hit safely in 13 of the last 14 ball games. Matt Myers, left-handed hitting center fielder for Randolph Macon. Grounded out to the second baseman in his first at bat here today. Pond misses upstairs. Brandon Pond out of the stretch. And... This is the first time Brandon Pond has had to work out of the stretch. He's given up the home run, but it was a solo shot to Iannuzzi. And other than that, there haven't been any base runners for Randolph Macon. So this is the first time that anybody has taken a lead there from first base. That's Grayson Bush, the shortstop. Infield double play depth for Lynchburg. Brandon Garcia, the shortstop, a little deeper than your average double play depth. I think the traditional by the book double play depth anyway. Center field straight away. Carson Atkins shaded slightly in the left center gap. Strike one to Matt Myers. Count goes to two and one. Lynchburg in action tomorrow against William Peace. That was a game that was actually scheduled for yesterday, but the schedule adjusted and will play tomorrow. This is a big stretch for Lynchburg though. It'll be three games against ranked teams in four tries, Randolph Macon here today, and then the Hornets will visit Shenandoah on Saturday for a doubleheader. Shenandoah right now third in the country. 
So this is a key stretch for Lynchburg. And just from a purely outsider perspective, if you could get two out of three between this game and the doubleheader against Shenandoah, if you could get two out of three, you'd feel really good about yourself. Now, you know the way great coaches and great teams think. They're thinking about winning all of them. They're not thinking about let's settle for two out of three. Because, again, that's part of the things good teams and great teams do. They've got that mentality. They think they're going to win every time they step on the field. And let's face it, Lynchburg has been pretty close to that at 26-4 and four this season. No reason to think otherwise when you put on that Hornet uniform. 2-2 two -two count. Good battle going here between Pond and Myers. There's a strikeout looking. Brandon Pond got Myers on one. I think he just couldn't figure out from the right hand to Brandon Pond. That is K number three of the game for Brandon Pond. And Matt Myers will have to walk back to the dugout. Hitting streak on hold at the moment. There's the replay. Holden Fiedler, an excellent job doing everything for Lynchburg, but the framing and the presentation from Fiedler has been top tier all season long. Pond has taken a couple looks over at Grayson Bush, the shortstop. Got on with the single. Two outs in the top of the third. Pond holds, deep breath, fires. Runner fakes it. Lynchburg did scramble to cover. But then Bush retreats back to first base on ball one. So there's a good option offensively that maybe is underutilized, the fake steal. You break hard for a couple steps, you sell it, get the head down, let the defense think you're stealing. They have to rotate over and cover. Then you stop, and all of a sudden your hitter has maybe a bigger hole to hit through over there on the right side. 2-0 count. Pond will go after Iannuzzi. He hits one into the outfield. Long chase from Jackson Harding, but he ran it down. Long haul trucking for Jack Harding to take a hit away in the gap. Lynchburg, a 3-1 lead. We're through two and a half here at Fox Field. How about this? Jackson Harding throwing the glove up at the last second to take a hit away and maybe a run away. We're going to the bottom of the third on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Riley O'Donovan leads off for Lynchburg, who leads in the game 3-1. to one. Yellow Jackets took the 1-0 lead after the solo homer from Ethan Iannuzzi, but he flies out to end the top of the third inning. A great play from Jackson Harding in the right center gap to take that hit away and get a danger man, Ethan Iannuzzi, out. Riley O'Donovan measured the breaking ball there, was ready for it, but didn't get enough of it. He'll float that one to center for out number one. Riley O'Donovan now one for two. He's got one of those six Lynchburg hits. Gavin Collins has an RBI. It was a sacrifice fly in that successful first inning for the Hornets. I've been saying all season long, this Lynchburg team is all grad students and seniors and then freshmen. But the caveat to that, the catch there is Riley O'Donovan, the last hitter, and Gavin Collins. They're both juniors. 
So there are some very talented sophomores and juniors on this squad, even though at first glance, it looks like it's all, it's all the bookends, all the youngsters and then the fourth and fifth year players. Gavin Collins has got a 1-1 count. He hits 269 on the season. He's driven in 22 now after that sacrifice fly. Five doubles, three triples, two homers for Gavin Collins. He can play wall ball. We've seen him go deep at Fox Field. 2-1 count with one out. Collins will swing on that one and get a good piece, but it's foul. And now it's a 2-2 count for Gavin Collins from Centerville, Virginia. He's facing Sam Slevin. Slevin's on for his second inning of work. Came on in relief of Cam Furman. Long hold there from Slevin. Collins will hit that one to the third baseman. Could be a tricky play at first. Nope, no problem there for the Yellow Jackets to get out number two of the inning. That was Carter Johnson. Could shuffle and throw across the diamond. Jackson Harding. One for one in the game. And this is a continuation of his very hot streak in the last two or three weeks. Eight games in a row. Jackson Harding has got a hit, and there you see him with a great defensive play. That was the one that ended the threat in the top of the third. Now Jackson Harding on to do it with the bat again, potentially. Eight game hit streak now for Jackson Harding. It's nine out of his last 10. And at the moment, it's four straight multi-hit games. It would be five if he can collect another hit here. And he might just have to the second baseman. Going to be bang, bang at first. Jack Harding beat it out. And so it is five games in a row with multiple hits for Jackson Harding. Jackson Harding, not blazing speed, but you can see him getting down the line quickly. You knew this was always going to be a difficult play there as deep as Lottenschlager had to range. Credit to Lottenschlager just for getting to that ball and having a chance, but it took too long developing, and Jackson Harding beat it out for single number two of the game. He has now just what a stretch Jackson Harding has got going on. Came into the game hitting 372, and about three weeks ago he was, he was around 290. Harding will try to steal, feet first slide, but the throw is in time. Good release, good strong throw from Logan Smith to get Jackson Harding at second. So Lynchburg does get one hit. They don't leave any on here, though, as you get Jackson Harding trying to steal. Throw is on the money from the catcher, Logan Smith, for the third out of the inning. We step aside for a breather after three complete at Fox Field. Lynchburg leads three to one. Football has taught me a lot throughout my life. It's definitely had a huge imprint on who I am as a person, competing at a Division III level. It created that opportunity for me to go to college. Not only was I the first one in my family to graduate college, but I was really the first one to even go. Being the first one, I'm breaking that cycle, and, and now that I've graduated, I'm not sure what's the next step, but I know I have a lot of doors open. And a lot of those are open because I played football and ran track here at Otterbein. Shout out to that Lynchburg softball team who got a key win over the top-ranked CNU captains earlier this week. So much good stuff going on here at Lynchburg. How about the tennis teams, men's and women's tennis? They're just lighting it up here in this spring season. Looking forward to seeing some tennis action sometime soon. 
We're watching baseball right now. I'm a huge tennis fan, going back to like the 80s. Now, of course, I'm dating myself a little bit when I say the 1980s. But, um, well, I guess I could have watched the, the old stuff, you know, like on YouTube or something. Moving on, back to baseball. It's a 2-1 count for Brandon Pond. He's thrown 45 pitches now in just over three innings of work. Just barely missed with the off speed there. And now it's a 3-1 count on the three-hole hitter. Carter Schmidt, the DH for Randolph Macon. Jackets come in at 26-6, and 13-3 and three in conference. They split with Shenandoah on Saturday. Those games were in Ashland, but uh, it was eight in a row before that for Randolph-Macon, so they've won nine of their last ten. That loss to Shenandoah in the split is their only loss in the month of April. First walk of the game surrendered there by Brandon Pond puts Carter Schmidt, the DH, on first base. 3-1, Hornets lead. It's Hornets versus Yellow Jackets here today. And it'll be Hornets versus Hornets on Saturday when Lynchburg heads up to Winchester to take on Shenandoah. 1-1 one, one count for Brandon Pond. Looks in for the sign from Holden Fiedler. Fastball upstairs, no good. That's ball two. There is a little bit of action in the Lynchburg bullpen. Nobody appearing to get real hot real fast. I think it's just some guys playing catch, getting loose, staying loose in case they do need to get warmed up quickly. 3-1 the count now as Brandon Pond, I think, missed with the breaking ball there. Hunter Cole is the right fielder for Randolph-Macon. He's 0 for 1 so far in the day, rolled out to the first baseman. Same spot there, but because Eric Hyatt is holding the runner on. That one is able to squirt through and good base running by Carter Schmidt to go first to third. So there's a seeing eye single from Hunter Cole. It may be mound visit time from Holden Fiedler. That's been the game plan that we've seen quite a bit from Lynchburg as far as Fiedler really knows when to take those timeouts and go chat with the pitcher. Fiedler's so good about knowing what each pitcher requires, I think. Some guys Need to get settled down. Some guys need to get pumped up a little bit. Other guys maybe need to remind them about the game plan for the next hitter coming up. I think Fiedler really understands that piece of being a good catcher. And the pitching staff, pitching coaches for Lynchburg are the same way. Travis Beasley, the associate head coach, he really gets it. He, he, he seems to really embrace the fact that every player is different. And the, the themes and the concepts are going to be the same, but the message might be slightly different depending on who you're delivering it to. Breaking ball for a strike there for Brandon Pond. Should be a 1-1 one, one count, yeah, with nobody out. Runners at the corners. So danger is here for Lynchburg. They lead 3-1. to one. But this randolph making offense so potent. Over 11 runs in their last five games. They're averaging over 11 runs in their last five. On the season, they average nine runs per game. It's been a very successful year for randolph Macon. They hit 336 as a team. Lynchburg, for reference, baseball fans hitting 307 as a team. Look at the tail of the tape. Statistically, these two teams are really, really similar. One-two count. Pond got him. Another power slider that was out of the zone as Miles Webb was swinging the bat. Strikeout number four of the game for Brandon Pond. As Miles Webb will have to walk back disappointed and up steps Aaron Lottenschlager. Away target from Fiedler, Pond hits it, yeah. That slider that time had more vertical break than horizontal. He can give you both. I, I think he has the ability to tweak that break just based on the release, but then sometimes for a pitcher, some of it's just out of your hands, you know. You cut it loose. You're not exactly sure what kind of action you're going to get on it. Pond holds, kicks, runner goes. Fiedler will pump to second. Hornets do not throw. And now Hunter Cole is in scoring position. Schmidt on third, Cole on second. 
And we'll see if Brandon Pond can dig deep and get nasty here with one out. Umpire came out to have a brief word with Ray Hedrick, the head coach for Randolph-Macon. One away, Aaron Lottenschlager, the second baseman, is the hitter. He's hitting with a 1-0 count. Corners are in. Excuse me, just the third baseman, Gavin Collins, is even with the bag for Lynchburg. Eric Hyatt, first baseman, is back deep for Lynchburg. Middle is deep as well. Outfield regular depth. Aaron Lottenschlager is 0 for 1 so far today. He hit a ball up the middle earlier, hits up one up the middle here. One run is in. Tying run coming home. Carson Atkins, the center fielder, got to it, but came up and did not opt to make a throw to the plate. We are tied after a two RBI single from Aaron Lottenschlager. He hit the line drive up the middle off Pond's glove in his first at bat, and he went to the same place with that one. Good short, compact swing, up the middle approach, drives it in. Yeah, you saw Atkins there. I think he just did not quite get the grip on the transfer from glove to hand. May not have mattered anyway, as Hunter Cole got a pretty good break out there at second on the base hit. So we're tied now, 3-3 in the top of the fourth. 1-0 count. Uh-oh, this ball got away from Hyatt. Ball got away from Hyatt on the pickoff attempt. And now Lottenschlager's in scoring position. Less than ideal for Lynchburg there on a ball that Hyatt had to cross in front of the runner there. Lottenschlager with a good technique when you're going back to that bag, go straight into the bag as opposed to putting that foot down and dancing out of the first baseman's way. He went straight in. Hyatt had to go around him to try to catch that ball. It did briefly just tick the mitt, but Hyatt was unable to bring it in. So trouble continues here. Brandon Pond has surrendered four hits so far. He's walked one. We got a tie ball game right now, 3-3. Three, three. Yellow Jackets looking for more. Logan Smith, the catcher. Smith swings on this. Got under it. Neves is there. Has the tent set up. Camped. He'll catch and throw into second. Crafty there from Avery Neves because I think he knew that Lautenschlager was going to bluff the run to third. It wasn't deep enough for Lautenschlager to tag and advance to third. So Neves kind of with the chess piece move there to throw back into second, assuming that Lautenschlager would return, and he did, but the throw not quite in time. Two gone. Tie ball game. Pond misses low and away to Carter Johnson. The third baseman's made a couple good defensive plays already. See if he can do something with the bat. 0 for 1 so far. And 1 at bat against Brandon Pond. Shortstop Brandon Garcia keeping Lautenschlager close at second. Here's a bunt attempt from Carter Johnson. Well placed at Gavin Collins. Collins throws, safe at first. Good play on the move there for Gavin Collins. Really athletic, got to it nicely, strong throw. But Carter Johnson with good speed, and it was perfectly placed for a bunt single. Fifth hit of the ball game for Randolph Macon, third of the inning. Two outs. Now you got that first and third situation again for Lynchburg. Got to have that coverage in place. What do you want to do if and when Carter Johnson decides to take off for second? Pond delivers, slider missed away, 1-0 count. Pond has pitched effectively, but you're starting to see more first pitch balls. And more balls that Randolph Macon seems to be getting the barrel on as well. Swing and miss on a breaking ball from Grayson Bush. He's one for one so far. Another nice one there from Brandon Pond. As soon as I said maybe the Yellow Jackets were getting to him a little bit, Pond seems to be proving me wrong. See what he can uncork here with a one-two count. 
and two outs. Pond kicks, deals, flared into right field. Harding is there. Good job on the scouting report. Harding, that was hit right at him. He was already playing in on Grayson Bush, and he makes the grab, but we are now tied. It's two runs on three hits. And we'll go to the bottom of the fourth inning here at Fox Field. Private education is too expensive? Think again. At the University of Lynchburg, you can get a personalized education for the cost of a state school. If you're commuting and you get our top scholarships, you could pay much less. And you get all that without the hassle of giant lecture halls. Our faculty know your name here and do more than just teach. You might even do research together and plan out your next career move. Lynchburg, we don't fear change. We embrace it in our students, on our campus, in our community, and around the world. The second baseman for Randolph Macon, Aaron Lottenschlager. You get a great second look at his. Line drive, single through the middle. That plated two and tied the ball game up. Aaron Lottenschlager with a two RBI single. Makes it a 3-3 ball game here at Fox Field. Lynchburg undefeated at home this season, 15-0 at the Fox. So that streak on the line every time that Lynchburg plays a home game. Obviously, this one has serious ODAC title implications, a regular season title. As Lynchburg right now, 14 and two, at the top of the Old Dominion Athletic Conference standings, but Randolph Macon not far behind at 13 and three. Swing and a miss there from the catcher Holden Fiedler, and now he is down on strike. Second strikeout of the game for Fiedler. Sam Slevin continues to impress here for Randolph Macon. He came on in relief of Cam Furman in the second inning, and he's pitched second and third, and now one out into the fourth inning. Carson Atkins struck out in his first at bat. That was the first hitter that Sam Slevin faced. But it feels like, feels like a heavyweight matchup right here, fans. Lynchburg seventh in the country, in the Division III rankings. Randolph Macon ninth. Macon has won nine of 10. Lynchburg has won 13 of their last 14. So it's two heavyweights that are playing probably their best baseball of the season. Foul ball there for Carson Atkins that stings a bit. He wears the shin guard like a lot of people, but I think that one missed it, got him on the inside there on the ankle. Or maybe it was just the foot. But either way, Atkins will take an extra minute to compose himself and get some feeling back and get ready for an 0-2 delivery from Sam Slevin. Slevin's another one of those guys that works exclusively from the stretch. Set position the whole time for Slevin, even with nobody on base. Breaking ball missed. Pretty good location for Slevin and Randolph Macon. But Atkins was ready for it. One, two, the count now. Lynchburg scored three in the first. That was a five hit inning for Lynchburg. They've gotten one hit since then. That was Ben Jones in the second inning, but nothing for the last seven hitters. I, and I'm wrong, fans. Jackson Harding got that single last inning, and he got thrown out on the bases. So disregard everything I just said as Jackson Harding got another hit, but this time Carson Atkins strikes out. Swing and a miss there to bring up Brandon Garcia, the leadoff hitter for Lynchburg with two outs. Yeah, for Lynchburg, it's seven hits total. They've left four on. And I think I got slightly confused because Jackson Harding was erased on the caught stealing last inning. But now it's two outs on two Ks. Sam Slevin maybe gaining confidence and getting even better here in his 
third inning of action out of the bullpen for the Yellow Jackets. Still more activity in the Lynchburg bullpen, although one of the guys tossing is Brandon Pond, trying to keep the arm loose. Brandon Garcia just hit one right through his counterpart, Grayson Bush, the shortstop for Randolph-Macon. That ball was smoked by Brandon Garcia, and it took that one hop on the dirt. I think that was just enough to turn it into a difficult play for Grayson Bush. It was always going to be difficult. You got to see the tail end of it there as it kicked off Bush's glove. You can see some frustration. He thinks he should have had it. I tend to give the credit for Brandon Garcia for just smoking it off the bat. I believe that is Lynchburg's eighth hit of the ball game. It is. Brandon Garcia, the leadoff man, is at first. Strike one on Ben Jones as the catcher Logan Smith pump fakes to first to maybe keep Garcia in check. A one count, two outs. Jones is one for two so far in the game. Brandon Garcia, two for three. His hot streak continues. Great read by Garcia on the ball in the dirt. That has been such a big part of his game all season long, and one of the reasons why he is great fun to watch. It's just, it's just a standard breaking ball in the dirt that the catcher has to block on, but Garcia is so good on these dirt ball reads. You can see it there. Extended it a little bit, his secondary lead, as he saw the pitch out of Slevin's hands, and then when he sees it has kicked away far enough from the catcher, he's gone to second. He is so good at that. And that's a play for a freshman that you would think would be a little bit tougher because the game is quicker at the college level, but the speed is no bother for Brandon Garcia. He brings some speed of his own. He's in scoring position now for his high school teammate, Ben Jones. One, two count. Big pitch here for Slevin. He's already struck out two in the inning. Went inside, mm, making the entire team thought they had it. I don't know how much of that was salesmanship or the catcher Logan Smith really thought it was a strike, but he definitely sold it. Instead, it's just ball two. Twos are wild with number 21 hitting. Jones swings on that, lifts it into center. Looks like it's going to be a relatively easy play for Matt Myers. He pulls it in. The fourth inning is over. We're knotted at three. We've played four complete here at Fox Field on the campus of the University of Lynchburg. you're missing What a day to play here at Fox Field. It is a beautiful afternoon in mid-April. We're in the mid-80s today, and they're talking about maybe touching 90 for a top temperature. Not 90 miles an hour for the pitcher, 90 degrees tomorrow maybe in April in Central Virginia. It might happen. We do have another home game tomorrow. William Peace will be in town to take on the Hornets. We're looking forward to that, but so much business to attend to here between Lynchburg and Randolph-Macon. Brandon Pond is still out there to start the fifth inning for the Hornets. 
He surrendered five hits thus far. He's got an 0-2 count on the leadoff man, Matt Myers. Myers struck out his last at bat. He's 0 for 2 so far on the day. And he's got his hit streak hanging in the balance. Matt Myers has hit safely in his last 10 consecutive, 13 of his last 14. Ground ball to the second baseman. Ben Jones will gobble that up, sidearm it over to first for out number one. So the streak's still on hold for the center fielder from Randolph-Macon at the moment. Ethan Iannuzzi, the left fielder, has homered. That was the solo shot in the first inning that gave Randolph-Macon their initial 1-0 lead. Iannuzzi from Chesterfield. He hit 327 last year, scored 41 times, and drove in 40 last season. So a great combination there. That reminds you of an Avery Neves type of a stat. Here comes associate head coach Travis Beasley to have a conversation with Brandon Pond. Might be time for a new pitcher, or maybe just a reminder of the game plan against the talented Ethan Iannuzzi. Mentioned Iannuzzi from Chesterfield. Brandon Pond is from Chesterfield, and Brandon Pond's afternoon will be done. So call it four and a third for Brandon Pond. He gives up five hits. He struck out four, walked one. I would say a very effective performance for Brandon Pond. Probably doesn't live up to his standard, though, just knowing what I know about Brandon Pond. Got to sit behind him on Saturday down in Danville as Lynchburg took on Avert. And you just listen to some of the things that Brandon Pond talks about as a pitcher. And he's got the high standard. He understands what it takes to be successful. He's a former ODAC pitcher of the year a couple seasons ago. So, so I think this one will probably not quite meet his level of excellence and expectation. But overall, really not bad from Brandon Pond. He exits in a tie ball game. So he wouldn't be in line for the win or the loss at this point. It'll be just a straight no decision for Brandon Pond. And the new pitcher is Travis Shoemate. Number 11 for Lynchburg, Travis Shoemate. This will be appearance number seven of the season. He carries a 3.86 earned run average. Travis Shoemate last pitched on Saturday in that doubleheader sweep. Lynchburg took down Avert in both games. Got to see a little bit of Travis Shoemate. He's got a different arm action from Brandon Pond, as you see. Kind of a short arm, almost a catcher's motion there. But throws hard. Good life on the fastball. Good breaking ball. He's got that good combination of the, the fastball that really ends up being a sinker the way it moves, and then a breaking ball to come off of that that goes the other way. He'll enter with one out and nobody on. He'll be facing the danger man, Ethan Iannuzzi. Ethan Iannuzzi hitting 374 on the season. Nine home runs now. He has nine doubles to go along with that, so the slugging percentage through the roof for Ethan Iannuzzi at 641. He has stolen 14 bags. So there's another similarity that he shares with Avery Neves from Lynchburg, just a combination of power and speed. So exciting to watch these guys that can do it all. See what the game plan here is for Travis Shoemate. He has fallen behind 1-0 to Ethan Iannuzzi. Outfield a little bit deeper than normal for Lynchburg, but straight away all the way around. Iannuzzi swings on this one, bounces it to Gavin Collins. Collins on the run, throws, and they've got the out at first. Good play by Gavin Collins there. So good on the move for Gavin Collins. In fact, a lot of times I think you can make the case that he's better throwing on the run, Gavin Collins. We've talked about and seen some of his outstanding plays this season. Looks like it's just going to be one batter for Travis Shoemate. So he executes that job there. Travis Shoemate is off, and we get to see Angel Collazo sprinting in out of the dugout. Lynchburg playing the chess match here with some matchups, bringing in the lefty, Angel Collazo. Tip of the cap to Travis Shoemate there. That's, that's tough as a pitcher 
when you know the game plan is going to be just one batter. You, you put a lot into that, and there can be some high stress there. When you know you've got an entire inning, or let's say you're starting and you think you're going to get multiple innings, it can be easier to brush off some of those mistakes a little bit. But when you've only got one batter, the microscope is really on you there. So tip of the cap to Travis Shoemate for executing that. And now we get to see a guy that is so much fun, Angel Collazo, San Juan, Puerto Rico. He brings that flair to the mound. We love watching this guy pitch. It is appearance number 12 of the season for Angel. It's just over 12 innings. And he is pretty good in these left-on-left -left matchups. He's pretty good against right-handers, too. But I think that's kind of the role for Angel to try to match up left-on-left -left and get outs that way. Tends to induce a lot of soft contact. You see him throwing from that low three-quarters angle as we get a view of our three outfielders talking it over. Carson Atkins, Jackson Harding, and Avery Neves controlling the green grass here at Fox Field for the Hornets. It's a 3-3 ball game. Kyle Haney hanging out with you on LHSN. We're so glad to have you along for the ride this Wednesday afternoon. Or perhaps we should say hello to the folks that will watch the game later, the, the tape delay. It's not even tape anymore. We used to actually use tape, but now it's all digital, and we hope you'll engage with Lynchburg Sports on the social media spots, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, lynchburgsports.com. So much good stuff going on. And we've got some more great home games we're looking forward to on the diamond. One tomorrow against William Peace, a midweek game hosting Greensboro on April 26th. Last regular season ODAC home doubleheader will be against Guilford on April 29th. And then a game right before the ODAC tournament against North Carolina Wesleyan scheduled here at Fox Field. But hold all those thoughts as we've got a tie ball game, 3-3 three, three in the top of the fifth between the Yellow Jackets of Randolph-Macon and the Lynchburg Hornets. Collazo deals. That one swung on and blooped into left but foul. So Carter Schmidt, the DH, hacking first pitch against Angel Collazo. Sometimes you want to get a look at a guy. Not necessary for Carter Schmidt. And both these teams so good with their scouting. Uh, and obviously the technology and the fact that you can pretty much watch everybody online helps with that. But I think even before this modern era, both these two coaches really valued the scouting report, knowing what each guy is going to bring to the table, even out of the bullpen. He may not have the complete detailed numbers, especially against a guy like Angel Collazo because he's only thrown 12 innings and change. But obviously you're going to know what he – is all about, and Carter Schmidt was hacking early. It's a 1-1 count as Schmidt takes this one for a ball. Another good pitch there from Collazo, a bender right at the knees that Schmidt can only send out of play into the Lynchburg bullpen. 1-2 count. Collazo pitching to the designated hitter, Carter Schmidt. Collazo set at the belt, deals. That one missed upstairs. Don't know if it was intentional or not, but I like the pitching plan. Lynchburg's been at or below the knee on the first three offerings. Try to change the eye level, change the elevation. Go letter high right there. Schmidt lays off. He'll swing at that one. That one looked to be kind of up and in as well. So you like that from Collazo. It, it's great to be able to pitch to both sides of the plate, in and out, but also have the ability to go at the knees or at the letters is also very valuable. 2-2 two -two count. Another foul ball from Schmidt. This has turned into a really good at bat. It's a duel going on here between these two. Let's see who wins it. 3-3 three -three ball game. Collazo pitching to number two, Carter Schmidt. Softly hit to the left side. Fooled Collins a little bit, but then he grabs it and sends it across. Angel Collazo is pumped. He got the job done. Schmidt out on the ground ball, 5-3. We are all knotted at three, going to the bottom of the fifth inning here in Lynchburg.
a lot of people go to the universities to find something to be a part of while getting their education. And when you come here, Lynchburg is that something, it becomes a family. It's what the school's really good at doing. We always have fun up here in the press box, but these tight ball games, so many baseball fans up here. Our LHSN team is just full of baseball nuts, and I'm really need, we need to get more of them on the broadcast because they, they would bring so much. I love their perspective, and it's just always a blast talking baseball with whoever. We're glad you're watching it with us today. 0-1 count as Sam Slevin, still out there, came on in relief of Cam Furman in inning number two. And here he is pitching to Avery Neves in the bottom of the fifth. Neves belts this one. Center fielder going back, but will make the grab just shy of the warning track. Matt Myers with a good catch to run down the blast from Avery Neves. Eric Hyatt, the first baseman, one for two so far in the game. He had the second single in that three-run Lynchburg first inning. They have not scored since the first inning. And how about Lynchburg pitching-wise in the last inning, fans? Three outs from three different pitchers. Brandon Pond, the starter, retired the leadoff man, Matt Myers. And then it was Travis Shoemate to get Ethan Iannuzzi. And finally, Angel Collazo retired Carter Schmidt. I love that from Lynchburg. Associate head coach Travis Beasley always seems to have that magic touch. I say always. It doesn't always work out when, when you do that, when you play those matchups. But it works out this time for Lynchburg. Eric Hyatt will bang one past the diving third baseman. His second hit of the ball game. Hit number nine for Lynchburg. They're all singles, but I would argue if you keep piling those up, they're gonna do some damage. Use the boxing concept. If, you, if you're just using the jab, you might think, well, you can't win the fight that way. You gotta throw some uppercuts and some hooks and some crosses and some power punches. But maybe if your jab just gets through enough times, you can end up wearing the other guy down that way and winning the fight that way. Perhaps that's what Lynchburg can do here with these nine singles, or maybe there is a big knockout type of a punch coming. Riley O'Donovan's the kind of guy that could deliver that crushing blow. He has the power. Riley O'Donovan with a single in this game so far, but he enters the contest with seven doubles and two homers. Slugs over 460. So Riley O'Donovan can bang it around and hit it hard. 1-1 one, one count as O'Donovan faces Slevin for the first time, flew out to center, got jammed there, and it'll be another F8 in the scorebook for Riley O'Donovan. Two away now. Gavin Collins, another candidate to deliver a big shot for sure. Five doubles, three triples, two homers for Gavin Collins. Solid with the glove in that last inning for Gavin Collins. Had to make a couple plays that, in the books, it's just a 5-3 last inning for Gavin Collins. But there, there's some pressure there. He had to move around a little bit as well. Good hard hack from Gavin Collins. He was switched on and ready for that first pitch. 0-1 count. Got to love the way Gavin Collins turns it loose in the batter's box. Eric Hyatt leading off at first. A little bit of a bigger lead that got the attention of Logan Smith. Now it's an 0-2 count on Gavin Collins. Hitting from behind here, Sam Slevin continues to pitch well. I think he's gaining strength, really. Hit the spot that time. It was an away target, set up pitch, clearly. 1-2 count on Gavin Collins. Let's see how Randolph Macon comes back off of that set up pitch. Away target again. Pretty close, but 
a little low, and now it's a 2-2 count. Number three, Sam Slevin, the second pitcher that Randolph Macon has used. Slevin holds, longer hold this time. Now he delivers, breaking ball away, 3-2 count. So it's full for Gavin Collins. Eric Hyatt, the base runner at first, he'll be on the move with two outs. Volume from both dugouts. Everybody's into this one. Fans are into it as well. Breaking ball in the dirt. Nice at bat from Gavin Collins. Fell down 0-2, but able to draw the walk there. Didn't offer it anything out of the zone. And he is on with two outs for Jackson Harding, who is two for two. Jackson Harding has now five straight multi-hit games. That dates back to last week in contest against Virginia Wesleyan and Pfeiffer midweek, and then also two against Avert. Jackson Harding is swinging, I think what we've got to say is the hottest bat on the team. Here's a number for Jack Harding. Since April the 8th, he's 12 for 18, and that is uh, actually now up to 14 for 20. So since April 8th, that is game two against Ferrum. Jackson Harding is 14 for his last 20. Not your typical seven-hole hitter, and it seems like Lynchburg has really benefited all season long. When one guy that was hot kind of goes cold, it seems like somebody else catches fire. It was Carson Atkins, the nine-hole hitter for a while that just couldn't get out. Obviously, Ben Jones had a great start to his freshman campaign. Brandon Garcia has been hot all season long. He probably should go in a different category. Avery Neves has caught fire at various points this season. But right now, the hot hand with the bat is this guy, the key man from Keysville, Virginia, Jackson Harding. He'll take breaking ball for strike one. Runners at first and second. Eric Hyatt is at second. He had his second single of the game earlier in this inning. We're tied 3-3. Harding will look at another breaking ball. So now it's an 0-2 count. See what Jackson Harding can do. Gavin Collins fell behind in the count 0-2 just a few moments ago and ended up drawing a walk. Four straight balls after that. Slevin deals. Harding takes it. It almost looked like it hit him. Look back at the umpire. Took a long look. I don't know if he was just waiting to see what the catcher would do. Catcher. Logan Smith with a good slide to get in front of it. I think he's a little shaken up on the play. Yeah, umpire's going to walk out and give him a few moments to catch his breath and compose himself. It's a 1-2 count for number two, Jackson Harding. 3-3 three, three ball game. Jackson Harding with perhaps a chance to change that. Harding, one of the nicest guys on the team, too. Real hard worker. And you talk to all the teammates, uh, they're just so happy for him that he has caught fire. Obviously, it helps the team too, no doubt about that. But it makes you feel good when you see one of your buddies really just bust loose and have a great stretch of baseball. That's what Harding has done. But a swing and miss this time. He is down on strikes, and the game is still tied. Lynchburg leaves two on, one single. No yellow jacket errors in that inning. And we will move to the top of the sixth at Fox Field in Lynchburg. My name is Sarah Watts, and I am a computer science major. I chose to play softball at the University of Lynchburg because I came to friendlies and camps, and the team and the coaches were so welcoming, and I just, after that, I knew this was the place for me. The University of Lynchburg has helped me achieve goals because through my classes, I do a group project, and I think that will prepare me for my job when I need to work with people. The person that has the most influence in my life would be my parents because throughout my softball career, they have done nothing but support me. And when I have bad games, they always pick me up and they're always the people that I go to for anything because they just know that they're always there for me. I like playing softball at the University of Lynchburg because the girls and the team, they're all super fun to be around and they always welcome you and they're always there if you need anything and if you ever have any questions, they're the people that 
en el tiempo. Jack Batchmore is on the mound for Lynchburg in the top of the sixth. Batchmore, one of the best in the conference so far this season. He enters with a 3-0 record, seven saves. He struck out 54 and only walked nine in 41-plus innings. And you feel like maybe the bullpen closed now for Lynchburg. They'd like Jack Batchmore to take this into the ninth inning and hopefully keep Randolph making at bay and score some runs. That's the game plan at the moment anyway. Lynchburg's got a lot of different cards they can play out of the bullpen, aces and jokers, but now it's the Jack. Jack Batchmore, number 48, is on. 1-1 one, one count to Hunter Cole, the right fielder for Randolph Macon. Randolph Macon's got some great options out of the bullpen as well, including a guy that is tied for the league lead in saves with Jack Batchmore. That's Cole Stam. He's got seven saves in 12 appearances. Feel like if the game is close, we will be seeing Cole Stam at some point. But who knows what the future lies. Two strikes now on Hunter Cole. He's one for two so far in the game. Batchmore pitched against Randolph Macon. First time these two ball clubs met a couple weeks ago. Swinging a miss right there. K number one for Batchmore. That is the fifth strikeout in the game for Randolph Macon. Back to Batchmore in game one here, fans. It was five and a third innings on the road in Ashland for Jack Batchmore a couple weeks ago against Randolph Macon. Did surrender two earned runs there. And so far this season, it's been tough to score on Jack Batchmore is he's only given up six earned runs. So two of those were a couple weeks ago in the first time these two ball clubs met. We haven't really talked about the revenge factor for Lynchburg much as Garcia will range in the hole. Got his glove to that, but it was going to be a tough play, even if he fielded it cleanly. And that's an infield single for Miles Webb. He had been 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. So Webb starting to heat up perhaps. And it brings on the second baseman, Aaron Lottenschlager. He is 1 for 2. Had that key two RBI single up the middle in a two-run fourth inning for Randolph Macon. Base hit there, and that is their first hit since the fourth inning. Six of them on the board so far for the Yellow Jackets. 1-0 count with one gone. But just six earned runs in 41-plus innings for Jack Batchmore, he had a long streak where he did not surrender surrender any earned runs. And I'm sure he would love to start a new one of those. He, he actually has started a new one of those, but would love to extend this scoreless streak that he's on right now. Batchmore checking his scoreboard, making sure the count is correct. It is one out in the top of the sixth inning. Strike there as Lawton Schlager got a head start to first base, thinking it was a walk, but instead he'll come back and hit. Pickoff move from Batchmore, and Lynchburg still has other options they can go to out of the bullpen. Don't mistake me there, fans. They have some key moves they can make, but I think the plan is to have Batchmore just take this one all the way into the ninth inning. High fly ball as Avery Neves will have a long time to drift under that one. He does pull it in for the second out of the inning. Logan Smith, the catcher, steps up. He's 0 for 2 so far in the game. Logan Smith is one of those guys that has not played all season for Randolph Macon. This is start number 9, appearance number 13. But when he's been in the lineup, Logan Smith has been dangerous, hitting 438 this year. He's walked seven times, struck out seven, been hit once. But it's a pretty good stat line for Logan Smith. He's driven in 12 and scored 17 times. 
Batchmore, another toss over there to keep Miles Webb on a string. Miles Webb singled. Hunter Cole struck out to begin the inning. Webb singled, then Lawton Schlager with that recent fly ball to left field. 1 0 count, Batchmore missing the zone there. Lynchburg winners of 13 of their last 14. They've won 18 of their last 20. On the season, Lynchburg has lost to Randolph Macon and Roanoke in conference, and then a non conference loss to CNU, and also one to Piedmont opening week of the season. But that's it 26 and 4 for Lynchburg. Batchmore has fallen behind 2 0. That one just out of the zone high for Batchmore. She does not walk many hitters, but we'll see how much Batchmore is willing to take off just to get strike over. Maybe he doesn't need to. Maybe it's just a refocus. Maybe one, one key mechanical thought. I think Batchmore is a guy who doesn't, doesn't like to think about the mechanics much. It's pretty much grab that target and go. Runner was on the move there as Logan Smith fouls that one straight back. And now it's a full count. Lynchburg's, again, pitching coaches, I think they probably don't get the credit they deserve, certainly from me. But Lynchburg, as a team, the team ERA is first in the ODAC at 3.01. It's fourth in the country, team ERA for Lynchburg. Pitching staff has been incredible up and down all season long. And there's more. Batchmore didn't even like the pitch, but he'll get a strikeout with it anyway, and the inning is done. Big Jack K's two, and we're still tied as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Thanks, man. We return to Fox Field, the campus on campus at the University of Lynchburg. It'll be Holden Fiedler due up for Lynchburg. And it is a tie ball game, 3-3 three, three in this key conference matchup between the Hornets and the Yellow Jackets. Lynchburg ranked seventh in the country, the latest Division Three poll, and it is And it is Randolph Macon ranked ninth in the nation. 1 0 count here on Holden Fiedler. Bauer is the new pitcher for 
Randolph Macon. And he comes in with some outstanding numbers. He was one of those key options out of the bullpen that we talked about. This is appearance number 13 for Bowers. He's got a 1-2 and two record, but a 2.78 earned run average. And it seems like Slevin Bowers, as Holden Fiedler, stops the conversation momentarily with a line drive foul. Uh, it's It's been... Stam, Sneed, Slevin, Bowers, and Lawler all have over 10 appearances out of the bullpen for Randolph-Macon. So those guys have been getting pretty steady work. Cole Stam leads the – or tied for the conference lead with Jack Batchmore with seven saves. Uh, Bowers has two saves himself. And the other guys out of the bullpen pitching pretty effectively. How about Sam Slevin? He went innings two through five for – Randolph Macon did not give up any runs. So four scoreless innings, he surrendered four hits, but just outstanding stuff from Sam Slevin in relief of Cam Furman. So Bowers is the third pitcher that Macon has used. Holden Fiedler will strike out, throw down to first is in time. Third K for Fiedler in the game. And now it brings up Carson Atkins. Carson Atkins. Enters the ball game, hitting 343. He's driven in 27. Nine doubles and five home runs for Carson Atkins. In his career, he's got 138 hits, and 47 of those are extra base hits. So the power has always been there for Atkins, not just this season. But it's been fun to watch Carson Atkins do some real damage here. A lot of it has come in the last month or maybe even six weeks, we could say for Carson Atkins since about mid-March. He has really been on a tear. 1-1 one, one count as Atkins swings and misses at that one. Lynchburg back to the scouting report. You'll know a lot about these key options out of the bullpen for Randolph Macon, but sometimes that doesn't necessarily make them easier to hit. You can have a game plan going into the batter's box, but when you only get one or two pitches to see it and get it figured out, it can be a difficult proposition for a hitter. Fly ball out for Carson Atkins. He is 0 for 3 so far. Brandon Garcia, the leadoff hitter for Lynchburg. Getting a good look at number 7, the freshman from Durham, North Carolina. 2 for 3. And Brandon Garcia now has his hit streak up to 14 in a row. And there's eight multi-hit games in that stretch. Very consistent, productive stuff from Brandon Garcia. 0-1 count. Garcia swings on this one out in front, rolling ball fielded by Lawton Schlager at second base, and it's a quick, quiet inning for the Lynchburg Hornets. We will move to the top of the seventh. It's a stalemate here at Fox Field. Do not miss the conclusion on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. The biggest thing that I've taken from Westover is probably my interactions with faculty. I started working with Dr. Fryer. He's always available for help and he makes sure that I get to do the experiments and not just be there while he does them. I didn't want to limit myself when I came here to just taking the prereqs for med school. I wanted to get a full, well-rounded education, and I definitely found that in the Westover program. It's given me the opportunity to keep playing soccer at a competitive level, um, but also it's given me the ability to be a student and to pursue other activities such as EMS. hundred percent do Westover because it's not something they're going to regret, and it's going to be a lot of work, but so is everything else. It's just going to help build their education that they've already had and make them a better person for it. We're set to begin the seventh inning here at Foxfield, all tied 3-3. Carter Johnson leading off against 
Jack Batchmore. Lynchburg pretty quiet there in their half of the sixth inning. It was the first Lynchburg inning without a hit. Hornets got five and three runs in the first. They have not scored since the first inning, but it's been hits in, in two, three, four, and five. That stalled out there in the sixth as Lynchburg went down three up, three down for the first time today. Batchmore has missed again, 3-0 count. Batchmore actually got two strikeouts in the last inning. And really on that last strikeout, fans, it looked like Batchmore didn't get the release that he wanted. I don't think he was thrilled with the pitch that he made, but got a strikeout anyway, and it ended the inning. Now the count is full with nobody away here on Carter Johnson. Third baseman will take strike three looking. I think that was exactly what Batchmore wanted on that occasion. K number three for Jack Batchmore. Seventh time that the Yellow Jackets have struck out offensively. Shortstop Grayson Bush, who is one for two so far in the game, steps in to try to get something going in the top of the seventh inning. Strike one. Here's a good stretch of pitches here for Jack Batchmore. And another nice one, steep breaking ball. That's impressive from Batchmore. That's tough from the left side. Tough when a right-hander throws that, that curveball like that too, but coming from the left side, you just don't see it as much. Went back to it again, check swing, and Grayson Bush did not go. You just don't see many lefties with that power 12-6 breaking ball like Jack Batchmore can throw. Back to it again, maybe, yeah. Bush fouls it off this time. One, two count with one away. Grayson Bush is one of those players that has started every game for the Yellow Jackets. He's played a pretty impressive shortstop today. Batchmore, fastball at the letters, but it's a ball. Batchmore back on the mound, likes to work quick. Keep your comments short with Jack Batchmore's pitching. Another curveball. Good block from Holden Fiedler. Would have been important if Bush offered at it, but he did not. It's a full count with one out. Batchmore deals. Swung and fouled out of play. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming up here for Grayson Bush. Let's see what Batchmore goes with. Fastball, curve, change. Swung on and hit into left field. Brandon Garcia got a good first step on it at shortstop, but it was out of his range and down for a base hit. Two for three for Grayson Bush. He is on hit number seven of the game for Randolph Macon. Matt Myers, the center fielder for the Yellow Jackets, 0 for three, trying to extend his hitting streak to 11 games. Bush leads off at first. Bunt here to Hyatt. He'll step up. He'll tag Matt Myers, who went into the backpedal mode, which is probably a smart play. But Eric Hyatt just beat him to it for the second out. I think it was a, an attempt at a base hit rather than a sacrifice bunt, and I'm saying that because situationally with one out, probably not going to sack bunt him to second, but maybe it was a two-way concept there as Matt Myers thinking, well, I'll try the base hit. If I'm unsuccessful, I still get the runner in scoring position for Ethan Iannuzzi, but Iannuzzi will get intentionally walked. Free pass there for Iannuzzi, and it brings up Carter Schmidt. Carter Schmidt, the designated hitter, grounded out to third in his last at bat. That was against Angel Collazo, who came on for one batter. That was the inning where Lynchburg used three pitchers to get three outs. Really impressive stuff. But since then, it's been Jack Batchmore that is on. Crowd enjoying the sunshine and the baseball here at Fox Field. They're getting treated to a really good one, 3-3 ball game. It all hangs in the balance here in the top of the seventh inning. Batchmore, 1-0 count, set, ready, takes a look at second, delivers a strike. You're hoping for Lynchburg that this is the last time you'll have to face the meat of the order for Randolph Macon. That's if everything goes according to the script and you can get the outs in succession. 
That's what you're hoping. Swing and a miss there from Carter Schmidt. Thought it was a good cut, though. Looked like he was on it. One, two count. Might be time for Jack to get nasty right here. Maybe that curve ball that starts at the knees, ends up in the dirt, ends up the back of the plate. It's a good aiming point for that breaking ball down in the zone. One, two count. Here it comes. I think they went for it there. That one landed short of the plate, though. So maybe just a little bit too low to get Carter Schmidt's attention. 2-2 two, two count with two outs, and number two is hitting. So twos are wild. We love it when that happens. It's a 3-3 three, three ball game, though. If it was a 2-2 two, two ball game, it would actually be a little scary. Batchmore ready for another big pitch here. Runner in scoring position, another on first base. Mm. Schmidt just barely staying alive there. Another pitch down in the zone. Good control of the height there for Jack Batchmore. Talked about those pitchers that can go up, can go down, and you mix in either side of the plate, and all of a sudden you got a dangerous combination. Batchmore, the pitch. This one rolled foul. Carter Schmidt got a better piece of that one, but couldn't keep it between the lines. Schmidt is 0 for 2 with a walk. So he's been on once. He hits with two on and two away in the top of the seventh inning. Solo homer from Randolph Macon in the top of the first. Lynchburg answered with three. Hornets haven't scored since then. Randolph Macon got two in the fourth. Batchmore will spin and bluff a throw to second base. That is Grayson Bush, the shortstop, leading off at second. Good runner, so he's going to be a threat to score on a base hit. Another foul ball. Knocked out of play by Carter Schmidt, and we'll try it all over again with a 2-2 count. Fiedler's going to walk out to the mound. Holden Fiedler, the catcher. Great baseball mind, and this is uh, multiple times we've mentioned this game that he's so great at handling this pitching staff, working with the pitching staff. I guess when you say handling the pitching staff, it makes it sound like Holden Fiedler's some kind of a, a puppet master pulling all the strings or using the, uh, using the PlayStation, the Xbox controller. No, Holden Fiedler is so great at working with the pitching staff, getting the most out of all these guys, including Jack Batchmore. 2-2 two -two count. Carter Schmidt putting together a nice long at bat. Here's the pitch. That one misses upstairs. Full now. 3-2 for the left-hander, number 48 for Lynchburg. Batchmore's ready to work quick. Ball in the dirt. Fiedler could not stop it. It's ball four anyway, so it ends up not costing the Hornets. But it is a walk, and it does load the bases. It's back-to-back -back walks when you count the intentional one on Ethan Iannuzzi. Hunter Cole, one for three so far in the game. Struck out one time. That was in his first look at Jack Batchmore back in the sixth inning. So here we go. Two outs, bases loaded. Batchmore fires upstairs. Ball one. Batchmore does not walk many people. So to see him give up one there is not startling, but a little surprising. Foul ball from Hunter Cole. It was back-to-back -back walks, but the intentional, the, the free pass to Ethan Iannuzzi, you can't hold that against Jack Batchmore at all. 1-1 one, one count. Out at any base for the Lynchburg defense. Everybody deep except Gavin Collins. He is even with the bag at third base. Now backing up a little bit with two strikes. I think taking away the, the base hit bunt option from Hunter Cole. One, two, the count. Big one coming from Batchmore. Had a lot of big pitches in this inning, and there's another one. Batchmore, strike three, got his man to end the inning and leave the bases loaded. Tie ball game going to the bottom of the seventh inning. Feels like momentum swinging over to the Hornets' side. Let's see if the bats can produce.
the athletics, academics to pursue my career, a wind symphony to pursue my passion for music, and really have a nice uh, general atmosphere. The professors here are really unique. Their, their background and their passion for teaching. It's really a place where you can explore. Uh, it, Lynchburg gives you the opportunity to fail, but also get back up in that period of time and, and learn from your mistakes. I can make these mistakes within the school environment, but also uh, with the support of other friends and be ready for the real world when it's out there. Number 21, Ben Jones, left-handed swinger, will get back in there for Lynchburg to lead off the bottom of the seventh. Jones is one for three. Had a very, very fast start to his collegiate career. Ben Jones is a freshman from Durham, North Carolina. And right now, he is hitting just 250, but there's five doubles and four homers in there. 15 walks to only eight strikeouts for Ben Jones. The on-base percentage is still relatively high, despite the average dipping a little bit. Ben Jones always makes those loud, long outs. This one off the end of the bat, though, will stay in the infield. Could be bang, bang at first, and yeah, Ben Jones beat it. Just a slight bobble from Lottenschlager. But in this fast-paced ball game, sometimes that's all it takes. Ben Jones is on. We'll wait for another official ruling. It looks like it's gonna be hit number 10 of the game for Lynchburg, and it is, it is hit number two of the game for Ben Jones. An infield single for Ben Jones, which is crazy to think about because Benny Bombs, he likes to hit the ball to the warning track, wall, and then over. But he'll settle for the infield single, and he's on with nobody out for Avery Neves. The All-American will watch a breaking ball in for strike one. It's still Bowers, the third pitcher of the game for Randolph-Macon. They have their talented options available, though, as the Yellow Jackets, very good pitching numbers. Not, not quite as good as Lynchburg, but again, Lynchburg with the best ERA in the conference as a team and the fourth best ERA in the nation. That's going to be hard to top, but Randolph making not far behind with their pitching staff. There's a good slide and a block from the catcher, Logan Smith, to keep that one in front. It's a 1-2 count now on Avery Neves. Neves from Reston, Virginia, one of the all-time best to ever play here at Lynchburg and really extend that to the entire conference. Back-to-back -back first team All-American. He's got a runner on with nobody out right now. Oh, that ball will go into the outfield. A pickoff attempt by the catcher, and it's going to be not 90 feet, but two bases for Ben Jones. Slides into third, and Ben Jones is pumped. The dugout is on the fence letting them know how they appreciate his efforts. Ben Jones drew the throw from Logan Smith. That'll be an error. First one of the game on Randolph Macon's defense. How about Ben Jones? Turning around second, slides headfirst into third. Actually a pretty good stop there by Carter Johnson, the third baseman for Randolph Macon to keep that ball in front or Jones might have had a chance to score. So Bear Bowers now pitching to Avery Neves with a runner on third and nobody out. Infield staying back for Randolph Macon. Neves swings, hits it to the shortstop, and it'll eat him up. The run scores, and Neves is on first. Avery Neves hit that ball hard, and it was well placed. Jones scores, so the error ends up being pretty critical there to allow Ben Jones to go from first to third, and Avery Neves with an infield single. 11 hits for Lynchburg. 11 singles. That steady jab is working. And Lynchburg has the one run lead. 4 3 advantage as you get a mound visit here. You can feel the energy at Fox Field. 
A lot of students have made their way down. We've got a bunch of just Lynchburg fans here. We've got some Yellow Jacket fans that have made the trip. It's a perfect day to play baseball. And then we get a great game to go along with it. Lynchburg 15-0 at home this season. They are 36-2 at Fox in the last two years. And in the last four seasons, Lynchburg, get this, 65 and 6. 65 wins in the last four seasons here at home. So just a mound visit. Bear Bowers will stay out there for Randolph Macon. He'll be facing Eric Hyatt with nobody out and Avery Neves at first base. Neves a base stealing threat too, by the way. Avery Neves is second all time in stolen bases here at the University of Lynchburg. Not running on this one, but he's gonna get there on the ball in the dirt. There's that dirt ball read again. I think that one was pretty easy for a speedster like Avery Neves. And really, it, it probably should go down as a stolen base, but it doesn't. But Neves able to scamper over there. He's a threat to steal third, though. It's not like it's not it's not like the handcuffs are on, or maybe the, the shackles on the feet. The leg irons would be the better analogy when you're talking about the running game. Hyatt swings on this one into the outfield. Didn't get enough of it. Should be an easy grab there in right. Pulled in by Hunter Cole for the first out of the inning. Riley O'Donovan, one for three, singled in that three-run first inning. Oh, no, it's a pinch hitter. So we have a pinch hitter coming up. It is Cam Lane into the game for Lynchburg, their first substitute offensively. Cam Lane will come in in this designated hitter spot that Riley O'Donovan started the game in. And we'll get to see... Cam Lane, who is obviously no stranger to this Lynchburg lineup. Cam Lane is hitting 311 so far this season. 19 hits. He's been hit 11 times in 17 starts. Cam Lane has had some pinch hitting appearances this year. Yeah, this will be game number 24 total for Cam Lane. So he's played in 24 out of 31 now. 01 count for Lane. Avery Neves is at second. Leading off, Neves with a infield single, RBI single that drove in Ben Jones. Lane fouls that one straight down. It's an 0-2 count. Cam Lane, grad student from Manassas, Virginia. He's a career leader here at Lynchburg, career leader in hit by pitch. 51 times he's been plunked now in 139 career games. Third on the team last year with 52 hits. So he's a hitter, too. He's not just a, a, a punching bag up there wearing the ball in the, in the shoulder and the elbow. He can hit, too. Neves will take off. Got picked off. He'll try to slide into third. Bang, bang, play there. Third baseman held on. And Lucas Jones is going to argue that the third baseman blocked the bag without the ball. Good sportsmanship here from Avery Neves as he slid in hard and he's checking on the third baseman. Carter Johnson. You like to see that, and they will change the call to safe. They will change the call to safe. So good awareness by Coach Lucas Jones, and the umpires pretty immediately saw it there, and they got together. You cannot block the base or be in front of the base without the ball. You have to give the runner a lane to slide into. Carter Johnson did not do that. Uh, so statistically, it may be a stolen base, but we'll look that one up here in between innings. The, the bottom line is Avery Neves is 90 feet away now. Lynchburg leading 4-3, 0-2 count on Cam Lane. Infield is in. Lane will watch that one just outside. Pretty good pitch by Bowers. I, I, again, I want to say that I love the sportsmanship there from Avery Neves to make sure Carter Johnson was all right. You think in a game like this, a key ODAC matchup, two rivalries, two rivals always playing each other close, the fact uh, that you have the awareness to do that is Avery Neves. That says a lot about his character there, and you love to see it. Lane will take the breaking ball. Good eye there. That was a pretty nasty pitch from Bowers. 2-2 two -two count. A lot going on here all of a sudden. Seemed like the middle part of the game there. Innings five and six were scoreless for both teams, but now all of a sudden 
Business is picking up. Another ball. Cam Lane looking to punch the clock and go to work and get in business here. Full count, one out. 4-3 ball game. Lynchburg leading by one. Avery Neves drove in Ben Jones. They both have singles in this inning. Eric Hyatt flew out to right. Full count pitch coming from Bowers. Swing and miss from Lane. Good at bat there from Bear Bowers. Really had to dig deep, I think. May have to do the same with Gavin Collins. Collins has a sack fly, a walk, and a ground out to third in this. Two away, Avery Neves at third. Got to be really clean if you're Logan Smith because Avery Neves has the speed to score on not just a pass ball, not just a ball that gets to the backstop. Avery Neves has a chance to score on those balls that just barely kick away from you. I think any ball that deflects out of the dirt, Avery Neves is probably thinking go here. 1-0 count for Gavin Collins. Two away. Collins thinking go. Swings on the breaking ball but cannot keep it fair. And it's just strike one. It's always nice when these games that you think are going to be close live up to the billing, live up to the hype. Two ranked teams, two teams in the top ten in the country and at the top of the standings in the ODAC, and they're playing like it right now. Collins will watch that one for ball two. Randolph making 26 and six on the year. Lynchburg is 26 and four. So these two ball clubs are 52 and 10 combined. Collins takes that one for strike two. We know he can hit with two strikes. He fell behind 0-2 in his last at bat and then ended up working the walk. 2-2 two -two count for Gavin Collins. Runner at third base for Lynchburg who leads by one looking for more. Long hold from Bowers, now the delivery. Shot up the middle. Bowers got his glove on it. It deflects to Lautenschlager. Throw a little low, but fielded by Miles Webb for out number three. So Lynchburg takes the lead back. They're on top, four to three, as we move to the eighth inning here at Fox Field in Lynchburg. My name is Brittany Coleman. I graduated in 2014 and I have a major in chemistry and a minor in secondary education. And I'm currently teaching chemistry and seventh grade science at a local combined school. Being able to have access to your professors pretty much anytime they're in their office is really helpful, especially in difficult science subjects. I love that I am able to teach a difficult subject to students who typically aren't going to perceive it as enjoyable. Um, I'm able to present it in an interesting way because I was presented this information in an interesting way. It's nice for me to be able to mirror what it was that influenced me to be able to teach. Miles Webb will be the leadoff man here for Randolph Macon in their half of the eighth inning. It's five, six, seven due up for the Yellow Jackets, still facing Jack Batchmore. Batchmore is the fourth pitcher that Lynchburg has used. And you go back to the fifth inning for the Hornets, they used three pitchers to get three outs. Each guy for one out apiece. The starter, Brandon Pond, then Travis Shoemate came on to get Ethan Iannuzzi. And it was on Hel Collazo getting the final out. That was back in the fifth inning. A lot has happened since then, including Lynchburg taking the lead again. Bottom of the seventh, Hornets score one on two singles. They leave Avery Neves stranded at third. Neves will have to come on and make this grab in the gap. There's the speed again from Avery Neves. There's those All-Americans. They impact the game in so many different ways. And Avery Neves using the speed there to run that one down. This, this defensive lineup that Lynchburg has in the outfield is really elite when you think about it. Carson Atkins, an elite defender out there in center. Jackson Harding, we have seen run down a ball in the gap over his head and take a hit away. Jackson Harding actually had an outfield assist when these two teams met. Harding's going to get pressed into service again here with this one pretty much right at him for out number two. 
Uh, Harding had an outfield assist when these two ball clubs met a couple weeks ago. And then you add Avery Neves in the mix, who we know about his speed. He's got a great arm. He's got a couple assists from the outfield this season. But really, it is a weapon. Defensively, Lynchburg, just not a lot of holes. We know there's no soft spots in the lineup for Lynchburg. We know what their pitching staff brings to the table. This is a ball club that has it all. We'll get an offensive timeout here as I think the game plan here is to slow Ren, uh, Jack Batchmore down just a little bit. It was two quick outs. It was a fly ball that Avery Neves ran down, and then Lawton Schlager, I think on the second pitch of the at bat, banged one to right field. So it was F7 and F9 really quickly, and I think the concept of that offensive timeout was to try to stem some of Jack Batchmore's momentum that he had going on. It's an 0-1 count with two outs. I think Batch is that guy that I don't want to say he, you don't wake up the sleeping bear concept, but I just don't know that it's really in your favor to, uh, to do something that Jack Batchmore doesn't like. We've seen a couple teams take exception to Batch's glove that he uses. It's got a little bit of gray on there, and some teams will – Tell the umpire, hey, we don't really like that. That usually doesn't end well. But on the other hand, Jack Batchmore's numbers are going to be good even if you don't say anything. So maybe as a coach you feel like, hey, what other option do I have? Let me, let me take a timeout and see if it slows this guy down a little bit. It's a one-two count with two outs. Oh, Batchmore thought he had strike three right there. Mm. That was another one. Oh, so close. But it's ball two. 2-2 two, two count. Batchmore comes back, gets a ball in the air foul off the bat of Logan Smith. The catcher for Randolph-Macon is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. I think Logan Smith has been a pretty good backstop. Did have that throwing error last inning that allowed Ben Jones to go first to third. Another one right on the edge for Batchmore there. Now the count is full. You can feel that tension, that electricity coming from the Lynchburg dugout and the fans as well. You can feel it from Jack Batchmore. Full count pitch is in the air. Jackson Harding is on, measures that one, and pulls it in for the third out of the inning. Lynchburg leading 4-3 over Randolph-Macon. Bottom half of the eighth coming up next on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division 3. Lynchburg will look for some insurance here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Jackson Harding leads off. Talked about his defense, talked about his offense. Jack Harding now with four straight multi-hit games. And it ends up being 11 multi-hit games total on the season for Jackson Harding. Takes ball one, Bear Bowers is still out there for Randolph-Macon. Just the third pitcher that they've used. I have a feeling 
he gets in some trouble, we could be seeing their closer, Cole Stam, even though it's a tie ball game. I think Cole Stam would be available. Seven saves on the season for Stam. It's a 1-1 count. As Jackson Harding swings on this, didn't get a lot of it, underhanded flip from Lautenschlager to first base for the first out of the inning. Holden Fiedler, the catcher, 0 for 3 with three Ks. So Holden Fiedler's got to be hungry and itching for a base hit. With Fiedler and, and really any catcher, I think most coaches will tell you, hey, just give us, give us the defensive stability, be perfect behind the plate, or near perfect anyway, and we'll take a couple slow days. Fiedler entered the ball game hitting over 300. He's had a great season, 314 to be in fact. 127 hits in the career for Holden Fiedler, another one of those grad students. 0-1 count. You don't want your, your catcher spot to be a complete black hole swinging the bat. Fiedler definitely is not that. Just a tough day today. Facing some good pitching for Randolph Macon. Their staff is just about as complete as Lynchburg's. Talked about that tail of the tape. It's pretty close as far as the pitching numbers go as well. Fiedler looks at ball or looks at strike two rather. It's a one-two count. Lynchburg allows just 3.67 runs per game. Randolph Macon allows 4.56 runs per game. It's a 4-3 ball game right now. Fiedler will get that one off the end of the bat. Could be a tough play. Dropping in front of the center fielder. So it's not hit hard, but it's well placed for Holden Fiedler. And on a day where you're 0 for 3, you'll gladly take that little bloop single to give you a hit, keep the average over 300, you would think. And you bring up Carson Atkins with a runner on and one out. Atkins also 0 for 3 today. Two strikeouts for Carson Atkins. So he's ready. He's due to possibly do some damage. Twelfth hit of the ball game for Lynchburg. All singles. It's been a topic of conversation for us all season. Lynchburg has the power game. They can hit balls deep. They can hit balls down the line and use speed and get doubles that way. But right now, it's been all singles. And that's probably another byproduct of facing a good pitching staff, facing a good team like Randolph Macon. They're going to keep more balls lower in the zone. So you're not going to really have as many meaty kind of a pitches in your, in your power zone to hit the ball deep. You may have to settle for some of those bloop singles, infield singles. And Lynchburg's had their share of sharp ones as well, as that ball will kick out of play. But just the one base for Holden Fiedler. As that one hit Logan Smith trying to block it and then kicked all the way over the backstop. So it's now a runner in scoring position and a 2-1 count for Carson Atkins. Carson Atkins led this team in average for a while while he was on his hot streak, down to, I think, fourth on the team now. Atkins will watch a breaking ball miss inside. Carson Atkins is tied with Avery Neves for the team lead in hits at 34. Atkins looking for hit number 35 on the season right now. 3-1 count to work with. Bauer set, deals. Atkins got it off the handle and right into the pocket of the shortstop Grayson Bush for out number two. Brandon Garcia is two for four so far in the game. And a third hit would prove to be a very big one. Holden Fiedler, not great wheels at second. Sorry, Holden Fiedler fans. Not great speed at second. So you might have to make the outfielder move a bit in order for Fiedler to score on a base hit. Well, or Holden Fiedler could get to third on another pass ball that skips out of play. So there you go. Now Holden Fiedler's 90 feet closer, and a base hit will score. Any base hit from Brandon Garcia. He's got a 1-0 count. That can't make you feel real great as the catcher, Logan Smith, to know that the last two balls you've tried to block have kicked out of play, and now you can't have that happen because Holden Fiedler, even with great, without great speed, would be able to score on a pass ball wild pitch situation like that. 
if the ball completely gets away from the catcher, it's not like Holden Fiedler is super slow. I mean, he's going to be able to score on something like that. 2-0 count. If it goes out of play, it would be a mandatory base awarded. Garcia got under this one, and the inning is going to be over. Lynchburg does not score, but they do have the one-run lead. Last chance for Randolph-Macon. They're down one as we move to the ninth inning at Fox Field. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. Great moments are born from great opportunity. That's what you have here tonight. That's what you've earned here tonight. This is your time. Now go out there and take it. A lot on the line in this ninth inning here between Randolph Macon and Lynchburg. So much happening. We got a pinch hitter in there who we will identify in just a moment, but it's Jack Batchmore looking to close it out. Batch came on in the sixth inning. We figured the ball was his to run it off the sheet, take it off the scoreboard, and hopefully take Lynchburg to a win. Batchmore would be in line for victory number four this season, but there is a lot of heavy lifting left to do. And the Lynchburg defense will have a hand in that as well, you think. 1-0 count, now it's even at 1-1 to the pinch hitter, who is number 27, Richie Dudley. Dudley has played in 15, just hitting 261. Swing, swings and misses there, and now it's a 1-2 count. The undefeated streak for Lynchburg on the line here, and the first place position in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference on the line as well. Right now, Lynchburg is there at 14 and two. Shenandoah and Randolph Macon both lurking behind at 13 and three. And guess what? Lynchburg's got to go to Winchester to play Shenandoah Saturday. Swing and miss on a breaking ball in the dirt. Fiedler with a nice block. Oh, Jorman missed it. Popped out. Did he get it back? Umpire will bang it. Wow. That one could have been a catastrophe for Lynchburg. And you're not getting much disapproval from the Randolph-Macon coaching staff, so they either agree with the call or just don't think there's any need. And, yeah, great replay there from our LHSN team. You could see it. Umpires got the call right. Jorman did get that ball back in time. Credit the athleticism from Jorman to just snatch that one right back with the glove. I don't think that's one that you would ever practice, really, but it has probably come up somewhere where you've had a ball pop out, and you just kind of reaction snatch it back. But you don't think that that could possibly end up being a game-saving type of play. Might be a, a coaching lesson there for any of the young first baseman watching. Maybe that is one you should practice. Anytime it pops out, go get it as quick as you can with the foot still anchored to the bag. And then the athleticism to do the split there as well, which was mentioned. Yes, Josh Jorman, very flexible. Do the mobility work and the stretching, young players. Full count. Jack Batchmore, one away on Grayson Bush, the shortstop. Batchmore deals. Ball in the outfield. Neves is on the run to the gap, but he's going to pull this one in. Makes the grab for out number two. 26 in the books for Lynchburg. They're looking for one more to close down what would be a huge victory. Huge might be an understatement. It's a massive win potentially here for Lynchburg. Number 34 now in the game to pinch hit for 
Randolph Macon. This is Anthony Farmakitis. He is hitting 600 on the season. That's three hits and five at bat. So not a big body of work for Farmakitis, but definitely capable. And Coach Ray Hedrick wouldn't call on him in this point of the game if he didn't think he could get the job done. Batchmore, strike one there. Two gone. Farmakitis swings at that, fouls it away. It's an 0-2 count quickly. No time to get comfortable in there if you're a pinch hitter. Jack Batchmore is coming right at you. Full volume here at Fox Field from the fans and the players. That one was wide left from Jack Batchmore. Kind of missed the release. It looked like out of the hand maybe. 1-2 count. Batchmore is ready to go. Missed again. 2-2. Two, 4-3 two. ball game. Hornets by one. Top nine. Batchmore will get a cue ball off the end of the bat from Farmakitis, and it goes foul. This is what it's all about right here. Close ball game. Said that five of the last seven between these two ball clubs settled by four runs or less. And we got another tight one here. Pitch from Batchmore, hit the spot, strikeout looking. Hornets win it, four to three. They beat the ninth ranked team in the country. Lynchburg moves to 27 and four. They keep the top spot in the conference. 15 and two now in the ODAC and Lynchburg still undefeated at home this season. 16 and O for the Hornets. Randolph Macon, they're gonna fall to 26 and seven. 13 and four in the ODAC. What a great ball game. Lynchburg avenges an early see an earlier loss to Randolph making a couple weeks ago. Hornets get the win here. Four to three. What a fabulous day. So much fun out here at Fox Field. We're gonna do it again tomorrow. It's a non-conference affair. William Peace comes to town to take on Lynchburg. We hope you'll join us at the ballpark or as always you can see it on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. We'll say so long for today. Lynchburg wins it. 12 singles from the offense. Hornets get a great start from Brandon Pond, and then Jack Batchmore pitches the last four innings and gets his fourth win of the season. Lynchburg, 27 and four, and still undefeated at home. It's seven in a row now for the Hornets. Kyle Haney will say so long to you. Hope you can join us tomorrow. Big thanks to our LHSN crew. We had a great broadcast today. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday. Baseball fans, we'll talk to you tomorrow.